one question that I get asked about queerness. It's like, is this mm. from trauma? People right. ask. Right. And I asked myself that for so many years. I yeah. thought maybe I'm just attracted to women because I had mother issues. Mm. And I read the books on conversion therapy. Yeah. You know, I tried to like conversion therapy myself for so many years. And eventually I got to the point where I was like, I don't fucking care where this is from. Yeah. I am mm. just going to go with it because I... I want to be with women. I hate being with men. This is what feels right in my body. And does it really matter if it's from trauma? It's really like whose agenda does it serve when someone says to a person who's identifying as queer, well, maybe you should heal your trauma and then decide like who you, what you are. What a Herculean ask. Just heal your trauma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Chill. then you can figure it out. Don't worry. Everyone else around you will spend the entire, their entire life walking around bleeding but you have to figure right. out how to be the first human to heal all of your trauma yeah. <laughs> like, do you get tired of people like fetishizing hasidism not that that's what you're doing no, i'm just no, i'm no. just saying in general <laughs> like last night oh it is what i'm doing okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like does do you do you feel like that happens I used to get tired of it mm -hmm. because I would, I would be like, I would, you know what? I was so close to it that I would start getting flashbacks and I would be get shut down and I yeah. didn't know how to talk about it. Now I just more appreciate it because I have learned how to take the questions and turn them into the thing I want to talk into about. publicizing <laughs> your book. Exactly. <laughs> great. So I'll be like, it's really the chapter it's that two, marketing. Actually. So you know, if great. you want to learn more about this, yeah, re buy the book. Buy it. Turn to this page. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's also good. it's an opportunity to educate. Like honestly, Hasidim look really weird. Like yeah, they, they look different. They look they different. Look Amish and so it's kind of also nice to meet other kinds of Jews that are like, Oh, those ones are not like the rest. And I can see other models of Jews like you or race reform. And yeah. it's like, Oh, okay. Here's yeah. someone who isn't the same. There's other ways to be Jewish. Did it take you time to see them as real Jews? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still yeah. not see them as real Jews? <laughs> I don't know if I see anyone as a, as real, a real Jew. Jew. No. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I like that took me a lot of time to see like non-orthodox Jews as a real Jew because it's like you you use Jews as synonymous for orthodox Jews and like you probably wouldn't see me as a Jew right growing now? up. No, not not your now. Like self. yeah, your past right. self. Like I wouldn't be a Jew. Yeah, I would just be. You would be the girl wearing hot. a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Someone we and shouldn't hot. get too influenced by. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Yenta, the podcast that's sometimes about Judaism. comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Sometimes about comedy, sometimes mm -hmm. about Judaism, and always about gossip. gossip. And sometimes about queerness. And sometimes about queerness. I'm a super queerness. fan. You have a super fan. I'll do your intro. <laughs> Did you notice Shit. that we sometimes change the what we say depending on who the guest is? Do you? Yes. Okay. Well, you could do queerness Shoot. With this now one. you called it out. <laughs> now everyone will notice yeah it's so funny like we're because we, we we thought about doing sometimes about comedy sometimes about judaism sometimes about queerness but it was too long it's a list oh. of four is so we had to change so it lame. we had oh. to just do one and then one and then yeah so um, you, pick, you pick and choose yeah yeah, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> like everybody does yeah um yeah today on the podcast we have Dr. Sarah Glass. Ow, 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 ow. This is such an honor. Thank you so much for having the me. The author of Kissing Girls on Shabbat. Yes. Available now wherever you get your books. Get them. <laughs> um, this is our first guest who, writ who wrote a book. Really? Is it? I think so. Yeah. The first author. Probably. Wow. This is huge. And it's you're huge. also, you're a therapist. Yes. yes. You're, you have a practice in New York. Mm -hmm. um, are you a PhD? Yes. Yeah. You're yeah. a PhD. Yeah. You've got, you've got such a list of creds. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're here on your book tour. Yeah. Which we're so excited and about. Thank you for breaking your like kind of streak of having comedians yeah. and actors and like having a humble little author i really humble appreciate little it author. well uh, what happened was i i 
Sarah reached out to me. Can I call you Sarah? Yeah, yeah, please. Should I call you Dr. Dr. Sarah? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah reached out to do this to do this book signing event yeah. that we're going to do tonight. And I got an advanced copy of the book, no big mm-hmm. deal. Um, and I read it and it was so fucking good. I was telling you how good it was. Yeah, you were. And it was like so hot, so like so beautifully written. And I, I thought it would kind of just be this like, oh, you know, like me- sensationalized memoir about like leaving yeah. North, you know, like, and that, and that happens. And that's, you know, that's a lot of things that exist already, but it was so nuanced, so beautiful, so representing of like so many different types of people in that world and also just like a page turner like i just the way it was it was so fucking good i'm so excited to read it i haven't read it yet that's okay it just came out yesterday (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) also horny (laughs) horny i was reading (laughs) really i was reading it um uh on like on a camping trip with some friends and i was just like "Ah." (laughs) and i was like i wish i should i talk about it tonight on the book tour absolutely i want to like read i was gonna try to find the exact lines that were just like sexy as hell um but i'll do that why not i'll find them later um that's good patreon content is Mm. just the sexy parts Mm -hmm. of your book okay that's a great idea yeah we'll do that yeah for another (laughs) yeah another day no we were so excited to have you i was just telling ray before we started before you got here i was like oh my god i'm so excited she's coming you're like someone who i feel like i'm actually i want to know the things that you have to think about not Mm. these stupid comedians (laughs) who are just funny and useless i'm i'm ask your questions okay oh do we give the bio do we give your life bio we did should no we yeah we should more. give a little life but are you you pitch your life bio okay because i've been doing the two minute like yes elevator. perfect yes 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 okay just f- so people have context i was born into hasidic brooklyn which is exactly like how you would imagine it from film and tv it's like it looks like 18th century europe the men wear the big fur hats the women are in full garb and wigs uh i attended an all-girls school and the entire goal of my life was to go to heaven and the way to get there was through getting married to a man right so the whole like training was like how do you get someone to that point the only problem was that i couldn't seem to stop wanting women and when Mm. i was 15 years old i fell in love with my first girl wrote a new york times modern love essay about that and at 19 fell in love with another one and broke up with her a week before my arranged marriage to my first husband. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> it was rough. It was really rough, you know. Yeah. I, I have like a wedding video where I can see her at my wedding, <gasps> like she kind of wiping wedding. her red eyes and wow. trying to come back and support me through the dancing. Um, so it was not like my finest moment. I was just so hell bent on like, I'm going to get to heaven that yeah. I didn't really think through the impact. And of you're also that. so young. Yeah, you, you're well, like, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I read the book. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like 19 years old. Yeah. Y- right? Yeah. Like, yeah. of course, you're not going to be able to see they're the idiots. bigger thing. Yeah. It's right. I was and you're an brainwashed yeah. by from the time that they're infants. Like, of course, you're not yeah. going to be able to like see, think critically about that. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I have a clarifying question because I feel like, like, in the like progressive worlds of Judaism, there's a lot of talk about how Jews like don't really believe heaven or hell. We're just sort of like, mm, really? we don't know. What? But you are talking about heaven so specifically. Yeah. Do growing up, did you have a really clear image of heaven and hell? Yes, there were multiple hell as thoughts. well. Hell, like to my understanding, was like Siberia. It was freezing, freezing cold for all of eternity. And also, they had this story about like having like long utensils attached to one's arm that were like three feet long and sitting in front of a table of food, but not being able to reach it <laughs> to eat. Do you remember that one? No, oh, I don't remember that one. Utensils. I don't remember I've that one. But that image from somewhere else. That's so in stupid. The cold, <laughs> and I hate being cold and hungry. It's like my worst thing. No, I love that it was cold though. They're like, we're different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's not hell it's, it's not ice. hot <laughs> yeah. it's hell but cold yeah. yeah um no but you do have this other uh example of hell in the in the book of you're gonna be uh boiled in burning feces 
Yes. That one I heard. That one my brother yes. has told me. There are about multiple me. versions. Oh, yes. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, oh yeah, you're going to be bo- burning it. Sure. You're going to be burning in <laughs> feces, bro. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, I'll um, be there. Whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, great. Good, good. You know, good. Um, you know so sh- we'll hang out. kink play. Hot or cold. It's kind yeah. of, it's like a sauna. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, shit for the nervous ha- system. Healthy. Hot, cold, hot, cold. Maybe it's like whatever you hate more, that's your hell like the hell of your you know right that makes sense that would be good design. that would be a good design. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had like gehenna yeah that's what we called hell yeah which i don't really know what that means but it was never like it wasn't the same as a christian hell that it would f- for me like well, the way yeah. i was taught it that it would be like for eternity but it was that's like true. 11 you're months. right i forgot that it was no, like it was you would the amount of time equivalence your sins exactly you your soul and then and you then you get to, to earn your way into yeah that's so exactly true. okay exactly. here's what i learned from chabad yeah. those, <laughs> those weirdos they told me all of them they got together as a group and they all told me that that it's that hell was like 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 washing machine for the soul your soul yeah. gets there it's yeah it's hot it scours everything unclean off and then you go either on to the next life or to something else yeah and that's kind and of yeah. what we just like said. the longest was is like 11 months which mm-hmm. is why you oh. like pray you like do you say the mourners oh, cottage i think for yeah, yeah, months, or you yeah. do something for oh, 11 yeah, you months do. yeah and then you have the unveiling in the year like the unveiling of the tombstone that year right. i don't know you do caught it further than what i yes. literally just said but yes that sounds right yeah and but it's yeah. still like hell but, but i they guess just it's very chabad for them to sort of sugarcoat it and make it sound like don't worry about it yeah it's like a washing machine and then you come <laughs> out when yeah. you get clean <laughs> <laughs> right you just tumble yeah. around a little <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it's all fun. it's fun <laughs> <laughs> it's like a roller coaster <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah but okay so you were worried about hell worried about hell got married arranged married yes. had two children very quickly one after the other who are so cute by the who way are the best who you, you should yeah. look at their instagram you should put them in all your content <laughs> they're they help me behind this my daughter yeah. especially helps me with my yeah. content she's yeah. very cool yeah. she's cooler than me how, how old are they uh, my daughter jordan is 17 and victor is turning 19 next wow. month Great. wow oh my god yeah. the ages that you were uh, right wow. in the story and yeah. that made for awesome college essays for them for sure because <laughs> yeah, they were able to write like i was destined to be married at this age and instead because of this journey we've been on mm. i am going i'm applying to college and nice I get to be here so that's like wow if you have a tough life it could be a kick-ass college essay <laughs> mm-hmm. that's like a good life no doubt hack. yeah, Cash yeah. In. Cash, and that's yeah. what that's like our you could write a book out of your your life or right. a tv show there you or, go yeah, yeah exactly yeah. No. cash in yeah cash in sure. on the trauma yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very healing and so so yeah so you had two had two kids, kids and then um i went to college to social work like kind of snuck out of the community one day a week got into a car and like went to Rutgers with a car full of other orthodox women who were supposed to keep each other from being influenced by college huh. and um I spoiler alert got influenced yeah by college <laughs> even though I came in full garb like I showed up on campus like an alien I'm like in a wig yeah I'm pregnant with my second child oh my god in my grad program at 21 years old and everybody else is in like sweatpants and you know <laughs> Like pajamas wandering around, there are beer bottles everywhere, and here I am, like this Amish looking person. But I took everything in mm. and I saw that people were living free lives, and it sort of made me resent the marriage I was in. Mm. And so I got divorced. Um, but then, for multiple reasons that I go into more in the book, I had to like fake it as an Orthodox Jew in order to maintain custody of my children. Mm. So I would like act Orthodox on the outside and then secretly drive out of. Lakewood, where I lived, uh-huh. throw my wig in the back seat of the car, quickly apply some eyeliner, put on skinny jeans like while driving, and then go to like Asbury Park or Atlantic City, mm-hmm. where like the gay scenes were. Or Cubby Hole. I did sneak out to Cubby Hole yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Amazing. amazing. And you were going there just to like hang out, to go hook up, to like just what was the vibe? All of it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Did you have, uh, like, did you, and you were hooking up with women at that time, too. 
Or right. Women and men. Yes. Because I was like trying to just figure out, can I still be yes. straight? Yes. Mm-hmm. Kind of, because like my future depended upon me being straight or my children's future. But I couldn't seem to, again, like stop shaking thoughts for women. So I would hook up with women and then with men and like just vacillate back and forth until I married a second Jewish man. Mm. And, and moved to the five towns. To the five towns. I love that. Yeah. Do you know the five towns? Yeah. It's like like the way you described Lawrence. You went to Lawrence, yeah. right? Like I had, I mean, I grew up in Queens, but like I had tons of friends in Lawrence at, in, that live there and like that, I, that community I know. Wait, what yeah. were, what did the five towns mean to you in that move? Because to me, I hear five towns and I just think like super Hasidic enclave. What? To you, yeah, <laughs> like, five towns is so modern. It like, <laughs> it's like liberal, <laughs> yeah, poly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like in the five towns, I didn't have to cover all of my hair. I could sneak some out of the front of my wig. Mm. I was able to like uncover half of my kneecap. Sometimes I wore baseball caps to the supermarket instead of like a full on. You know, I was able to have a career more openly. Wow. able to be embraced for having a career i had the opportunity to like socialize with men and women who were professionals and part of american society but also religious instead of just associating with women yeah. who were most often not as committed to their careers you know they women in my hasidic community did often have careers but those were always secondary so mm. it was it was it was lib- it was like a big i don't know it was like taking off some of the burden moving to the five towns wow that's so interesting it's yeah. crazy and <laughs> yeah i know like <laughs> it's like all the relatives i was reading that in the book that you moved to the five towns and i was like <sighs> phew <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> like she's gonna be okay <laughs> yeah like she can watch tv now no, it's, it's fine. but also and like in the five towns i've heard this so from so many people there's like swinging going on Um, Can you confirm? Well, I will just say I was a psychotherapist in the community (laughs) and I was so honored to be trusted by the community. And so I'm just going to not comment. No! (laughs) No! This is Yenta. I love this. I have also heard about swinging in the five towns. Yes. Like that, like, like, especially like young couples are like, starting to be actually no this was in borough park mal oh who grew up in borough park was telling me that they grew up i don't know what sect they grew up in they grew up hearing that young couples were not supposed to hang out alone with other young couples Mm -hmm. because they would swing right Mm -hmm. you're just like yes yes yes, everyone knows this That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we weren't allowed to shake hands with men. We weren't yeah. allowed to wear shorts. Like, I wasn't allowed to wear short sleeves because that could cause a man to cheat. So, obviously, you don't want to hang out with another young couple, right? That's like anything that can cause somebody to stray. Yeah. Was bad. Yeah. And, and the thing that people don't realize is that, you know, they see like Hasidic people, Orthodox people and are like, oh, they must all be so invested in this because they look a certain way. But when you dig deeper, it's like they're all just it's diverse in that. It's so diverse even in that world. Mm-hmm. And you kind of have a joke about this or like, you know, everyone that's Orthodox has to be there. Yeah. And like, so, of course, you're going to have people who don't believe as much or who do or who want to rebel but still feel like they can't they have to you know keep up facades for their families yeah um but yeah i feel like there's so much like in in uh when i was living in brooklyn you know house of yes yes i would see like hasidish looking people all the time there. really all the time yeah it's it there's such like an underworld it really is an underworld of like you know people who look her, who are Hasidic or Orthodox and like, you know, go out and do do whatever they need to do. In the same way that there's an underworld of straight men who are actually closeted mm-hmm. and yeah. they go yeah. and they're married to their wives mm-hmm. and then they go and they have like boyfriends on the side, which also I had to learn about. Um, yeah. Not not <laughs> from personal <laughs> experience, but like, uh, yeah. Um, anyway. So, okay. So you were in the five towns with yeah. your second husband. Yes. Do you, have and your husbands read this? Sorry, I interrupted. That's a very good question. good question. Yeah. My 
first husband, I haven't talked to you about it at all. Do your kids speak to him? Yes. Okay. Um, but it hasn't, I, I, I don't really talk to him anymore, you know, cause the kids are old enough to navigate that relationship on their own. Mm -hmm. And my second husband also, I just have no idea if he's going to read it. Hmm. And he's such a key character, but yeah. our divorce was so painful for him because he really, we, he loved me Yeah, and we didn't have a bad relationship. And so when we split up, like we tried to stay friends, but it was too hard. Yeah. And so I didn't want to breach that wall and be like, by the way, you know, you're in my book. <laughs> I wanted wow. to like respect his, you know, whatever he needs to do. to. Move but I'm sure on. he knows. Because the Jewish grapevine is so... It's so yeah, every Jew that I'm speaking small. to is like, have you heard about this book? Really? Well, I wouldn't say every, every Jew, but every a lot. <laughs> like, when I... When I like, what, like, what, All of them. Every single one. Every single um, one. <laughs> no, but I feel like this book is definitely making yeah. a splash. So I would be Hopefully, really yeah. surprised if... And some people, you know, in the five towns, I'm sure, like, yeah. know you are talking about it i would be really surprised if it didn't get back to him but you describe him so beautifully in that book mm -hmm. and i i um there's this beautiful story if you don't mind me sharing sure. and we can always cut it yes of uh him going with you to get a tattoo yeah like he was like supportive Ugh. of you wow like exploring like outside yeah. of the religion and like just really a more about you as a human and not like oh you have to be this kind of way because you're jewish and blah blah yeah and wow, was he supportive of you like so nice. being with women too at first kind of he on the was side. yeah and he was like look even if you feel like you have to be with a woman while we're married i understand but then he realized that i could fall in love with a woman yeah he didn't he didn't yeah. take it seriously yeah, at really, first exactly yeah and then totally. i like sort of developed this crush on my peloton instructor <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was back when peloton was so small that i went to the studio and met her and then we hung out you know it's like in the book yeah and then he was like oh shit <laughs> it's yeah. not just like fun and games it's, yeah it's, yeah it's, it's be real. real it's real which must have been heartbreaking for him to see my eyes light up at something that wasn't him in a way that they had probably never lit up for him mm. through no fault. Oh my of his God, own. that sounds so painful. Yeah. Yeah. It also sounds a lot like the sort of the same problem that like a lot of monogamous couples who are becoming open mm. yeah. go through. It's a similar pattern. Yeah. You know? And also different in that. <laughs> but it's in very that different. <laughs> yeah. <detail. laughs> yeah. 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 But, um, because I feel like you never got the chance to even, like, try. Yeah. In a real way. Right. It was it was women. just, I didn't want to keep hurting him. And yeah. he wasn't Polly. And I did, like, start getting exposed to that. And I sort of had this wish, like, what if, you know, we could make this work in that way. I started reading yeah. mm. and watching, like, the Showtime shows about polyamory, which are, I don't know, like, so not cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but he just it just wasn't him so i couldn't like impose that on him tell us about being poly yes how did you come to that okay journey so, first of all like this is not something i've said yet in any media but i was like this is something about myself i want to be so honest about because i'm so tired of having lies and this i was like if i'm on this podcast i know this is a safe space mm. where i can talk mm. about this and it won't be like something that someone uses as like a judgment against me or anything like that. You know? Oh yeah. No yeah. matter what you say, you're going to be so prude. <laughs> <laughs> Have you yeah. seen the last 10 yeah. titles of our yeah. podcast? We're going to be like, like but give us stuff. something we have in our... <laughs> gone in. I mean, there was one episode where like, I don't know, do people get very like in detail yeah was it here. ahmed ahmed was so graphic so graphic, <laughs> so graphic. <laughs> you know what else was so funny when you had the orthodox lesbians on and like leah forster is going in and you're going with it and melissa weiss is like blushing yeah like you can hear her blush yeah it was great oh i love them yeah. shout out have they you seen that episode yeah yeah yeah, yeah. They're, and yeah because and i and we were talking about that last night too yeah. of like it's so ingrained in you like the shame yes. around this around sex around your body and uh it's really hard to to yes. unlearn that exactly and so in terms of like just going off the unlearning what i learned 
my entire life is that my body belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And I did that. I did that for 32 years. I was like, God, I got you. You can have this body. I'll do with it whatever you tell me I should do. Mostly, you know, I deviated here and there. But at this point, I just cannot have like anybody else lay claim to my body anymore. Mm. I just don't have it in me to do that. And so I'm, I take my relationship seriously. I'm willing to like work on them and have open communication and dialogue and be respectful and thoughtful. Um, but I just don't have it in me to really be monogamous. And I just, it works better for me hmm. when I'm poly. I feel like less trapped and more able to be present. Yeah. As yeah. you can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's why I'm poly too. What do you think? I don't know. Cause I, I I don't know. Like there is definitely a part of me that's like I do never I never want to feel like I can't do something. Yeah. But I don't know if that's healthy. You know, I don't know if that's like just comes from shit that I've had to deal with or if it's I'm sure it comes from that. I'm sure it comes from that. Um, you know, that's a question I ask myself a lot and it's yeah. a really common question that I get asked about queerness. It's like is this mm. from trauma? People right, ask. Right. And I asked myself that for so many years. I yeah. thought maybe I'm just attracted to women because I had mother issues. Mm. And I read the books on conversion therapy. Yeah. You know, I tried to like conversion therapy myself for so many years. And eventually I got to the point where I was like, I don't fucking care where this is from. Yeah. I am mm. just going to go with it because I, I want to be with women. I hate being with men. This is what feels right in my body. And does it really matter if it's from trauma? You know, yeah, it's a great like it's who I am point. now. And so I don't know if that question is like maybe everything we are is from trauma in some ways. I ha I wrote this down in my journal one time and it became a, like a guiding thing. It was like, am I gay because I'm fucked up or am I fucked up because I'm gay? Mm. Uh. Now I want to talk about why. Wow. You <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about the, yeah. Um, but like on that note, you know, I, I don't we're both like know, too much. Let's unpack okay, that, right? Gonna, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, but no. does that does that yeah. speak to what you're saying? I get that question no. all the time in therapy. Yes. I think what you just said is so crucial. Yeah. And it's really like whose agenda does it serve when someone says to a person who's identifying as queer, well, maybe you should heal your trauma and then decide it, like who you, what you are, who yeah. you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. That one's not so bad, but it's like heal your trauma. You won't be queer anymore. Whose agenda does that serve? Right. Mm. It's people who may be afraid of different like elements appearing in their community, not knowing how to talk to their children about it. And so they're like, let's just make everybody the same. So that way that works better. It makes us feel less cognitive dissonance in, our, in, in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Also, what a Herculean ask. Just heal your trauma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you can figure it out. Don't worry. Everyone else around you will spend the entire their entire life walking around bleeding. But you have to figure right. out how to be the first human to heal all of your trauma. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, uh, like, to your point also, like, you know, being queer in the way that... Uh, the the like the pure form of being queer of like just questioning everything and not putting yourself into boxes of who you are and just letting yourself be free like that i think for me no matter what is the the goal mm -hmm. um and i think this is a totally separate topic but like queerness has been co-opted by like some other shit Antonio's like don't talk about this <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Antonio's getting like pale <laughs> no no but I'm I'm, really, I'm excited to hear where you're going you mean like Israel no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well I mean just just in general like the political queerness of like mm -hmm. you have to have these political mm -hmm. beliefs yeah or you're not queer yeah. enough for us yeah there's like that camp of queer yeah and then there's the queer of like, I will not, I will be fluid. I will not put society's expectations of me because of gender, sexuality, et cetera. That's my version of queer. Yeah. And I think that is a, uh, a worthwhile goal for anyone, regardless of trauma or yeah. not. 
is that that's the point i think let's Does that make, make sense? Yeah, let's <laughs> make that yeah let's make that the new official definition yeah i like that you know and also it's like why don't we we can get to define queerness for ourselves right. nobody gets to tell us what being queer means people are trying yeah i yeah. love when people say the <laughs> like the queer lifestyle so you're living your queer lifestyle it's like like what is what's the lifestyle right. i'm like where's the lifestyle i want to go there yeah. <laughs> like do you have Sounds a good fun. routine for me yeah. <laughs> yeah. um sorry wait what do your kids think of the book so the kids um uh, my my daughter at some point was like mom like can you just cross out the sex scene? Oh, really? <laughs> so I went through the book and like crossed them out for her. And now she has her personalized copy. That's without cute. That's the sex scene. <laughs> and then like she comes running out of her bedroom one day and goes, you had a pink coach bag. Where is it? And I'm like, Jordan, that was like 2009. Like, I don't, you know, so they're like reading it almost like trying to learn what happened behind yeah. the scenes of their lives. They're very proud. They're very happy to share our family's story. Um, and oh, and then the other funny one was one of the kids hadn't read the whole book yet. And the other one started talking about it. And they're like, don't spoil it. And I'm like, you guys, <laughs> we live in Manhattan now. This is what happened at the end. <laughs> you know, we left the five towns. Yeah. You go to this school where you can be yourselves. You are going to college. You're free. You have diverse friends. Like that is the plot. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess they, you know, got so into it that they wanted to just read it. And because it, it that that's amazing. And that, is, yeah. That's how I felt reading it too. And I, I mean, I didn't know what happened, but it's like, yeah, even, yeah. I feel like so much of conversations around like queerness in Judaism and like queerness just in religious communities is around the coming out. Like, there's so many books that are like, this is how mm -hmm. I got out. You know, I'm thinking yeah. Glennon Doyle, yeah, is yes. famous for this, and and. Like, I'm so curious to know, like, what are the stories of what happens long yes. after that? Yes. You know, and like, like, I know you're working with patients and you can't talk about them, but you're interacting with so many like queer Jews. What are like the needs that are coming up from people who are long out? So there's something really interesting. Firstly, I'm writing book two about the messy middle. Hmm. everyone in america like we love a good before and after mm -hmm. before you know they want my wedding picture for like media after it's like i'm out and tatted and free but then there's a lot of messiness that happened yeah. i didn't leave everyone i had ever known and loved and then just become a normal functional person in america you know i was a total mess for a long time yeah mm -hmm. until i figured out who i was so we don't talk enough about the messy middle because we like the pretty pictures. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we see a lot is really interesting. There's this thing they tell you when you're in the community, which is if you leave, you will be homeless, like mm. a prostitute or a drug addict yeah. and things like that, you know, or sad. And so when people leave behind everything they've ever known, and then those things start to happen, mm. like I, I think we're more susceptible to For addiction sure. to depression right like yeah also there's less education yes we're not prepared so, people yeah. aren't prepared for yeah. housing insecurity yeah and then there's all the self-hatred it's like because i left well no because you were raised without the tools to survive on the outside mm. that's why you're struggling not because you left mm. so that's some of what i see in the messy middle yeah yeah what kind of mess was was your mess and like yeah. how did you get to it it seems like you're less messy yeah. now I or no maybe just maybe well what's just your looking. current state of mess <laughs> <laughs> you seem very put together I, that's always been my good trick yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like you know people just so often it's like if you like kind of pull it together it's right. like they assume you're okay on the inside mm. um Part of my mess was dating the wrong people. Also, when you come out of the closet, this is my experience, you're developmentally a teenager. Yeah. No matter what age you are. So I was like 32, but totally dating like a horny 13 year old. Like mm -hmm. if someone was hot, uh -huh. I was like, well, they must be a really great person mm -hmm. and we could totally make this work. I want to have their baby. <laughs> and like, this is like planning a whole future. Like yeah. being a teenager combined with Hasidic upbringing, you know, it's like oh my God. a setup for a disaster. 
Um, so I had some messy relationships where like I wasn't ready to really be in those and some great relationships too. I also, um, struggled with some addiction. Yeah. I'm sober now Mm. and that will be part of book two. Mm. Love that. Wow. I can't believe you're writing book two already. Yeah. You are the addictive part of me. It's like, I can't Mm, stop writing (laughs) now. Mm. Writing is like my little buddy. Oh my God. I would love if my addictive personality (laughs) was channeled into writing amazing books. Yeah. (laughs) Wait, did we talk about the poly thing? We talk, do you have more questions? Let's talk about it more. Yeah, because no, yes. because we start, you started saying I can only talk about this on the Yenta podcast yeah. and then we yeah. didn't and say then we what it was. You. That's our real signature. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know, you do do that. We don't let the guests talk. <laughs> okay, can I talk, we about, talk about ourselves more. <laughs> yeah. uh, who are you? Um, but yeah, can I pause for a second and yeah. talk about how I know like that's your signature because I'm such a super fan and this is why I'm such a super fan, I think. I've, I've neuroscienced it down amazing let's go analyze it because i'm such a trauma therapist so when i think about like paul i was talking about polyvagal theory earlier and you made a very good point not everyone knows what that is in normal conversation i'm like such a nerd so polyvagal theory is this idea that our bodies can react from two separate places to any stimuli that come our way we will either react from our brains or from our subdiaphragmatic region And so when we're calm and engaged and rested and everything feels good, we're able to think, right, and react from our minds. And when we feel triggered, we go into fight, flight, freeze, and we're reacting from like the subdiaphragmatic region of our bodies. And people with PTSD, including myself, often get triggered into fight, flight, freeze throughout the day Mm -hmm. or anxiety. It's like we'll get panicky at things that wouldn't make other people feel panicky, I'll get an email and like the subject line is ambiguous. And I'm like, this is when my life ends. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is where I get found out. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to get found out for anymore. (laughs) I'm like so open about everything. But, you know, I, so I have those throughout the day. Mm. And so what I love about your podcast is something about the banter and like the voices. It just reminds me to breathe and it reminds me that everything is okay. And it puts me back into like (laughs) polyvagal green good spaces. Oh, oh my God. And especially I'll go like on on this is because being Jewish and being queer are two things that have been so traumatic for me. Mm-hmm. And so then hearing you joke about it, I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's going to be okay. Like my body believes it. We're the best. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> yeah. We're saving lives. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love you so Since much. Since listening to your podcast, I've been telling clients like find podcasts that do this for you. Mm-hmm. Wow, you know that put you in that state. So my question for you really was: was that for each of you? Like, was that your intention? Like, what is your intention? Like, or is that a byproduct? Yeah, it was what to, to, put, to fix everybody, <laughs> <laughs> to put people in the polyvernacularly state. <laughs> that's what it's that's called, right? I think yeah. it would that's be like, you know, nervous system. <laughs> to calm the calm nervous. or something. Yeah, that's what we put like in, the, in the manifesto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's Yeah>. it. <laughs> We're sponsored by Big Neuroscience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, s- this was, you started this podcast, so yeah. did you have <laughs> <Yeah>. any <laughs> idea that anyone would feel this way about your podcast? Um, absolutely not. I started it because i wanted to hang out with other comedians mm. yeah. i wish it was better than that <laughs> <laughs> I really do um so i guess that goes into like why do you like hanging out with comedians you know um i think they're interesting they're funny yeah. i look up to a lot of them like i want to you know i want to it's really to extract information stealing yeah. jokes yeah steal <laughs> jokes <laughs> <laughs> um like learn more about the craft that's really it and because they're fun and funny obviously um and then i just naturally was interested in talking to jewish people or queer people Mm -hmm. but now we've kind of been expanding and then antonia came on and she oh changed everything because i was like so messy just it was just really hard to do it myself yeah and uh 
and Tony is way more structured and organized. <laughs> As, I don't know if you can tell by the fact that yeah. I printed out the yeah. scenes yesterday an hour before the oh, um, yeah. <laughs> an hour an hour before. I told you we read like a scene from yeah. the script. I texted her like an hour before we were supposed to do this. I had this idea to read this. <laughs> what do you think? We don't have to do it. I was not shocked. I'm like, this is that that tracks i yeah. honestly feel like it's like a jewy orthodox jewy thing do you have that like my mom is yeah. just always running last late. minute a yes. last minute yeah. uh-huh. probably kind of discombobulated all the time like yeah oh just it'll just have i think it's like a shabbos like we're rushing to get oh. everything done before shabbos yeah. like that kind of energy oh, also like the expectations for our lives are so intense mm-hmm. like i was supposed to be a mom also earn money and have a career yeah and like just do like I take care of my home and my spouse. And so by nature, there was never enough time in the day. And so I would yeah. take business calls at 10 PM after my kids went to sleep. Right. It's yeah. like hard to maintain boundaries when the, this amount of items are just not going to fit into this little amount of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everyone around sense. you is doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And like timelines are different. I think in orthodoxy, it's like, Oh, we thought of an idea. Okay. Let's do it next week. And like being secular, like in out in the world, I've learned that you can plan a project for six months to a year from now. <laughs> yeah. You can strategize how you're going yeah. to do the project. You yeah. don't have to think of it and then do it that week yeah. when your kids are sleeping from one to two eight. Like, you know. That's so, so interesting. Funny. Also really squares with my stereotype about the Hasidic community that they can get absolutely anything done at a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they can airlift a Jew yes. from any jungle <laughs> in the world <laughs> yeah. within 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, so what do you think? Do you, was that what you set out to do for the podcast? Okay. What I set out to do with the podcast was honestly, I was just like, like every time I've been on, there've been great guests and, and I, my life is better for getting to know those people. Yeah. And I just love spending time with you, obviously. And I love hanging out with you. Oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> Let's cash in. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and you're like, I can actually really help them fix shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. like, I bet I could figure out a chord or two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I mean, I think just like you, it was completely self-serving. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, has but honestly, it has great. to be because mm-hmm. it's so much work. Like, and I told yeah. Antonia this too. Like, the only way to make it continue is if you're enjoying it. Yeah, because it's, otherwise, it's just impossible. Yes, it's just too much. Yeah. Exactly. Until it's we get the big bucks. Until we get the producer and the editor and the yeah everything. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that's how you really change people and Mm. things around you just by following what you're passionate about thank you absolutely Mm. yeah Mm. i love that reason like we did it because we wanted to yeah that's the best reason to do anything exactly exactly okay so how many people are in your polycule right now great question great question (laughs) (laughs) honestly i one you know oh the person that we met yesterday Yeah. yeah i've been really really busy and so I haven't wanted to also like date when I don't have time. Right. right. Yeah. To actually like, I just don't, maybe a 1.125. 1. 1.125. 1. <laughs> like an occasional like person yes, I yes, see yes. when I, they're passing through or something. Um, but I, yeah, so. Like a lover. Yeah. Are, are, we you don't like back, that word. are we bringing back We lover. are bringing back lover. <laughs> I think lover is a great word. You es- take this stance. Especially in the poly, like, open relationship community. You know, because it's yeah. like, there's something in between, like, someone that you're just fucking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And someone that you're dating. Yeah. And I like the word lover. We already took back queer. Yes. <laughs> I we could we do should. lover. I think we need a total rebrand, though. I think we'll need, like, print ads with people yes. from, like, the like, <laughs> we'll talk queer to your PR team. You know, <laughs> we need hot people using yes. lover. Because when and I hear lover, us. okay, what do you think when you hear a lover? Like, I think someone who it, you are having sex with who means something to you. Okay, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, that's the rebrand. That's because you're on the rebrand already. Wrote, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, oh, we're I talking think, about like an 80s. I like, think yeah. like weird weird guy yeah. nah. who's who calls someone his lover and it's like really cringe 
It's not yeah. cringe when I do it. That's right. Okay. That's right. How about you? Do you want to talk about that for you? Like the poly thing? Yeah. The po- or your polycule, if you identify yeah. with that. The poly thing for me has been such a journey. Um, I, I think it started... And almost maybe similar to you, like I was in a relationship with a man for a long time, five mm-hmm. years. Yeah. And it was like my college boyfriend and uh, he wasn't Jewish. That was dramatic. And uh, we were open and I was only allowed to sleep with women. And because women didn't huh, count. People don't like that, but I love it. I don't yeah. care. Come for <laughs> yeah. me. Come for me. It was perfect. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it was all I wanted. Yeah. And you know what? I get it. Okay. I get it from the guy's perspective. Even if he, even, you know, like the, the people saying, oh, it means women don't count. It's like the most cynical approach, which I get is real for a lot of people, but I, you know, yeah, it's also just natural to feel less threatened by someone who is like so different than you, you know, like. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And I will fight. It's like people in a world without sexism. Yeah, that's not sexist at all. Yeah, it just happens that there are greater patterns that it happens to fall into for sure. But it was a sweet freaking gig. It was while you had it. And I said he can sleep with men. And that was it. Gorgeous. And he and he also could sleep with women, but he didn't really want to. Mm. I think he got a blowjob once. And I said, great. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Which is your poly little soul in there. A hundred percent. You're like, great. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. And like, I feel like. Uh, I love hearing when people that I'm sleeping with are sleeping with other yes. people. Like to me, that's so fun. I'm like, tell mm-hmm. me every detail. I want to know. I want to like, I enjoy knowing that that person is being with someone else. And then, and, but this might be like a power thing also. And then like coming back and telling me about <laughs> it. <laughs> 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 I like, they can go tell the other person about our sex too. Yeah. You know, it's not like, yeah, um, but something about the fact that they're like still choosing to come back to me yes. after they're sleeping with other people. I'm like, okay, like I'm hot, you know, like yeah. I, <laughs> I, well, I, we're good. Like yeah. I, we're, we're having good sex and we're, we're, we're vibing. Right. Um, yeah. so yeah. And I, there is someone I'm seeing right now who is like, we're kind of having ish. I don't, I don't know how much I want to talk about it, but like, you know, it's the poly you. thing. Yeah. Yeah. The poly thing is coming up because they're just not as poly as i am Mm -hmm. and you know some part of me thinks that maybe i just enjoy the chaos Mm. Mm. (laughs) let's unpack that let's unpack that but i'm like um not chaos chill with you i'm not gonna therapize you i promise i'm just here i'm just listening uh well (laughs) but do, do, do you feel that at all that i enjoy the chaos chaos is a strong word but like you know yeah i mean i think i yeah i think all of those things about myself Mm. you know like i know so much about the traumatized brain and that the traumatized brain really doesn't react much to neutral stimuli when you give me a healthy no Mm. drama relationship i'm like okay great what's next you know in a way so i'm working on that but i don't know if that'll ever be fixed and at the same time i also really really do love being free so it's both and yes. maybe yeah you know like not it's not just the chaos it's also like and i appreciate what being poly does represent for mm-hmm. me 100 percent. i feel like the most like drama that i hear about from my poly friends comes when they come into contact with or they fall in love with someone who's less poly than they are yes yeah. yes that's and, real like, then you start questioning yourself and doubting yourself. And because we already think that being poly is so alternative, Mm -hmm. it's really easy to slide into, well, maybe I should just work on not. Yeah. But because I'm like almost 40 years old, I'm like, no, hell no. (laughs) You know, I'm not going to convince myself that I'm not anything that I am anymore. I just can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I've already learned that that doesn't work well for me. I really like what you said about like, it doesn't matter how you got to queerness or being poly right you're just there you're there and it can evolve and you don't have to like check one box and then commit to it for your whole life you yeah know? right that's the other great thing about being queer and not having a box mm. i think that's such a recent addition to the conversation 
because like in the fight for like marriage equality and for so long, like the narrative around being queer was like, I was born like this. I can't help it. I can't change it. It can never change. I'm stuck like this. Mm -hmm. And like now that queer people, you know, have gotten more rights and respect, I think there's more room to open up and say, and say like, it could maybe change it could flex and flow as your life goes on but it's interesting that like that has has come into the conversation as queer people have gotten more privilege we're more yes bright. yeah yeah absolutely right like in yeah. recent years like the safer we are the more we can play mm-hmm. yeah and that works with kids who are traumatized too right like they don't play and they don't act like children it while they're actively going through trauma. And once they, they've begun to heal, they could play again. Mm. And they could do something just because it's fun, you know, yeah. and not worry so much all the time. So maybe like us adults are like that too. When we feel safe, we could just explore. Ooh, that is a good point. Trying Therapist. to like contextualize. This is freaking yeah. amazing. Yes. <laughs> You're well, healing us. Should we switch oh. to secrets? I think I think Thank I'm going to make this a two-parter. Great. Because it's also been an hour and a half. So yeah. Yeah. We can Great. Um, it up a little. Yeah. If that works okay. for you. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, we're going to get two episodes. Oh. Dr. Sarah Glass. <laughs> Um, this was so great. Yeah, I feel yeah. like we could talk to you forever. I know. I fun. know. Stay tuned for next week where we're going to talk about our secrets. 